his picture in the paper, every one of them that came into the meeting said, Francis, I saw Reverend Gaddy's picture in the paper. I saw Reverend Gaddy's picture in the paper. I said, well, bless your heart, I did too. <laughs> They love them some Reverend Gaddy. Yeah, Rebecca bought it to me as soon as that's the first thing I do is get her paper every morning. And I take the grandkids to school and that's the first thing she come in there showing me. Yeah. So I just folded it up and put it on my dresser and I said, I'll save it after I read it. <laughs> you know, they had, they had uh, one of them said, you know that Amos group, they are very, very active. It's a, what did she call it? Activism group, she mm -hmm. said, and they do good work, mm -hmm. but they stay at it. They don't give it up. No, they don't. Trust me. But um, hope everybody who lives in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Pleasant hey. Hill, Altoona, uh, what's the other city? Oh, man. What's the other city? 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 What's the so they all already decided, but um, if you're going out to vote, especially if you live in Des Moines, please vote yes. Because mm -hmm. you need some of these roads are terrible. The roads are terrible. People need because it's going to be a, a 90 cent tax increase instead of a, I mean, it'll be a 60 cent, <coughs> a 20 cent, uh, no, a 30 cent tax increase instead of a 60 cent decrease if it does it back. So. Something to think about. Something to think about. Say that again. It should be a 30 percent. It'll be a 30 cent tax increase Increased. for uh, homeowners. Property tax. Property tax increase. If it doesn't, it doesn't pass, pass. But a 60 cent tax decrease if it doesn't pass. Right. So a 90 cent turn on that thing. So you only want to say the homeowners want to think about it. Amen. Thank you for that good prayer this morning, Sister Alice of us. Um, yes, Sunday. We're looking at the transfiguration. I've seen something different in that scripture that I've seen before. And I think one of the things is, if you recall, when Peter, in, in the Matthew version of it anyway, mm -hmm. uh, when Peter sees Jesus with Elijah and Moses, Peter gets excited. And what does Peter say? Let's make the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Let's make three tents. Why? And what, and what do you think the tents were for? <laughs> praise the Lord. Bringing people together and praise the Lord. A little might part of it, but what else? You know, it was also part of Peter's idea that we want to hold on. Mm -hmm. We want to hold on to this. Because this is the, this is what we've been waiting for. <laughs> you know, this is what we've been waiting for. We've been waiting for this Messiah. And now he's got our heroes. He's standing with the heroes of the faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just like if, if Herbert was, was standing with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, you know, we would think Herbert was into something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, I get sick of picking on Paul. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he would be something. It'd be, this is something, something supernatural, right? Because <laughs> Moses and Elijah, they've been gone. Mm -hmm. So it's like, here he is with these guys. This means he is all that he said he was. Remember, because just before this, Jesus had asked Peter, or had asked, who do you, who do you say that I am? Yeah. And um, Jesus said, Peter said. And so, you know, the, you know, Peter had come up with that thing, you know, you are the son of the living God. And it's like, wow, okay? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And so now, this is like, it had come to fruition right here and there. But then, you know, while Peter is still talking about building these tabernacles, the voice of God comes down and says the same thing, the same thing that he said at the baptism. Mm -hmm. This is it my beloved son, son in whom I am well pleased. pleased. Listen to him. To him. Mm -hmm. And then it was over. Mm -hmm. And I was, and I, and I was thinking to myself, it's like, what is God saying to the church in the 21st century when we read that? What was he saying to them, first of all? What was he saying to them? What was he saying to the disciples that are gathered up there on that mountain? 
Here Come is on. the one that I sent. <laughs> and you need to listen. You need to open your ears, okay. your heart, your soul, your mind. Yeah, in other words, give him your full attention. Okay. What I'm saying is coming through him. Okay. And this is me speaking to you through my son. Okay. But just but don't miss the part about the building of the tabernacles. Mm -hmm. Because it's more than it's more than a display. I mean, you know, it's it's like it's like the church, really. Mm -hmm. You know, the church ought to be more than this building. We right. yeah. prize the building, we, we 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 cherish all of that stuff. Yeah. But the church ought to be more than yes. the building, it ought to be more than the music and the pomp and the circumstance. Okay. It ought to be a part where we are listening to hear what God is yes. saying to yes. us yes. now. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So did uh, Jesus tell Peter to build those tabernacles? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. No, that, that, no. See, it was a, this is Peter was so overcome. It's just like when anything is big happens, we get overcome sometimes. You know, okay, we want to build a shrine. <laughs> so is it kind of, I mean, you said how is it in, in relation to the 21st century, but I guess I'm going backwards. Okay. Is it kind of like when, uh, when the Israelites uh, didn't want to wait on, uh, didn't, didn't want to wait on God like Moses told them to when they started building the the golden yeah. Yeah. Gold, yeah. Mm -hmm. all that. Great point. Great point. That's just it. Whenever something is good, because remember what good happened to them, right? Mm -hmm. They yeah. had been released before they found out they didn't have no collard greens in each. <laughs> but but up, up, up until that point, they were just all happy. Yeah. They've been free from slavery. Yes. Yeah. So they're rejoicing about being free from slavery. But they were supposed to wait, though. Huh? But they were supposed to wait. But Moses but, went but, up but on the mountain. always wait? <laughs> now, sometimes they tell you to keep it to yourself. <laughs> but you can't okay. wait to tell somebody yeah. when something good <laughs> happened. You know? Like, so, I ain't supposed to tell nobody but I gotta tell I Paul. Tell but I, and if I tell Paul, I might as well have put it in the morning register. Yeah. Okay? See, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I I didn't want I didn't want to tell somebody, but you know it's like sometimes it's wait. No, it's obeying and following instructions is often hard for us. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, but but the Lord cut that off right away in 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 the, in the story of the transfiguration because after that the vision was gone. Mm -hmm. After the Lord spoke, the vision was gone. And so, but, but, but I did read you a scripture from 2 Corinthians that talked about the veil. Yeah. Did y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The veil. Because remember when Moses did come down from the mountain, yes. his face was too strong for the people. The people just, yeah. They couldn't even, mm -hmm. they, much, they couldn't look on God's face, but they even couldn't look on Moses, so, so he had to wear a veil. Yes. Someone said that, just looked at Moses and said he saw God. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was. The look on his face was so. Too intense, and I don't know if that's maybe that's something that we ought to think about too. You know that we the, the awe of God is beyond our comprehension sometimes, mm -hmm. and so and, and so it's like God resists our desires to box to put Him in the box. Mm -hmm. So you build a tabernacle, you put Him in the box. I can I can hold on to this, mm -hmm. and it's almost like no, you live with this. It's a big difference. You don't hold on to it. You live, you live with it. Okay. It's sort of like trying to live with, <clears throat> with the um, um, that 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 first feeling of love, right? Mm. So you know when people first fall in love. I was telling somebody this when I was in college. It was like I used to watch people, and they fall in love. And you know, you see them going up the roller coaster. Of, uh, I mean, going up the hill. They just happy. Yeah, happy, right. happy, 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 happy! Yeah. Then, then you saw Mrs. Gay. No, no, uh, no. It didn't work like that. It didn't work like that. I'm trying to see y'all. Don't, don't tell my story. I got it. But, uh, <laughs> but you're going up. No, but seriously, you're going up this hill, right? And I would watch people in school, and you know, they'd be so happy at the pinnacle when they love, and oh, it's real love. Uh -huh. But have y'all ever been on a roller coaster when you get up to the top of the hill? 
It all went downhill from their fans. Mm -hmm. Hands up, downhill. And I used to say, why? What is this? Because it, it's almost like a... And so then you go there, they go trying to chase that high again. And I'm like, okay, I got to go find somebody else. I'm going to go back up to roller coaster again. And it was like, this is nuts. Who would do such craziness, right? Why would you go? Why would you put yourself through this? Well, people do it all the time. So they, you know, when they say the thrill is gone. Yeah. And y'all BB King, y'all know that. Right. Right. The yeah. thrill is gone. <laughs> because when you have to live, you know, you can't try to, you're trying to hold on to something that was just part of the moment. Mm. <laughs> but you got, to, but, but, but love is something you live with. You yes. gotta live with it. You live with it because it because yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. the, the greatest thing is people people when they try to write their own their own um vows, they live that they leave out one of the great things in the in the traditional vows, which are not in the Bible, by the way. But the traditional vows is for better or for worse. Or worse. And folk who have true truth who understand truth because it's something you live with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It ain't always gonna be nope. like the high level. Well, so you, yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, to show you how significant, <clears throat> to see how significant and important love is, that's why Christ came to on earth. It's to show us and teach us love. Mm -hmm. To the extent that out of his love, he gave his life for us. Turns us of our sin. But one of, one of the goals, one of God's goals when Jesus came was to teach us love. But there's always there's a lot of confusion. And that's a good point that he's mentioning, but you got to understand that the love of Christ is not comparable to how we see love. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because we want all our love reciprocated. Yeah. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 If I do something nice for you, you better say thank you at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to, I want to, no, 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 don't tell, hey, you, what is it? Don't tell me you love me, show me. Show me. Right. You know, because that doesn't mean, you know, because, you know, show somebody me. just, because y'all say, y'all tell everybody y'all love them. Uh -huh. Y'all tell them, y'all tell the whole world, I love y'all, love me. That's why when they do something to you, so disappointed. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> when they do something to you, you so disappointed. <laughs> don't point your finger at me. <laughs> Sometimes, and you find out that a lot of times people, um, they say, you know, let me give you an example. Say, for instance, I tell my wife, okay, you know, this job is stressing me out and making me sick, right? Mm -hmm. And so she says, because she loves me, go ahead and quit, and, and I'll hold you up for mm -hmm. a couple months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear what I said? Don't, 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 get, don't, don't, get, don't forget the caveat. For a couple of months. For a couple of months. Now, oh, no, I don't want you sitting here. Oh, the, the people getting on your nerve, raising your blood pressure. Quit. Mm. And you can find something else. Or you can do something else. You know, because I'm saying, oh, I'm going to write my book. Okay, quit and write your book. But, you know, if you don't understand what it means to write a book, you better go on and get you a job. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Because <laughs> after two months, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm going and I can't carry all these bills. <laughs> but you said, out of love, I don't want them people to make you sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got you. For two months. <laughs> 
<laughs> for a couple of months, I got you for a couple of months. But you know, but I got, but, but you know, of course, we don't hear that caveat. But it's like, I got you. And then all of a sudden, we have problems because you know that love that was there that that was some beautiful love, and and so one partner is holding on to that thing. Yeah. That that oh, it's that, well, they love me so much they don't want me to be sick. The other part is saying, I don't know what he did here <laughs> when I said a couple months. <laughs> and, and then, you know, you write now, when I write my book, well, sometimes it takes a long time to write a book. It takes a long time. And so then the next thing is, well, you know what? You need to put that book down and be like, well, Curtis said, go get you a child. I tell you, I, 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 I tell you what. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, Mark, the third year, I don't know if you can call it an anniversary, but it was three years ago yesterday, where uh, I got fired from this job that I had. That it was a real good job, great pay, great retirement I, uh, benefits. I thought I was going to stay there and retire from there, and uh, got fired that day. And when I came home, uh, you know, I was devastated. I had already been crying. I walked, walked in the house in front of the wife. I hurry up and stop crying, but she could tell. And she was like, I was, I was devastated. She was like, I got you. It's okay. It's okay. It was that love that she got from me. It's okay. okay. It's okay. And because of the circumstances kind of messed things up for my little career or whatnot. So after First 30 days, okay, what you doing? Yeah. <laughs> 60 days, okay, what you doing? Okay, four and a half months, next thing you know, we fighting over everything. So she didn't throw that act, that she didn't put that caveat in the words, but <laughs> after four and a half months and not having no job and bringing in nothing but, but an unemployment check, you better get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I had to pull the, I, I, I had to pull the, the 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 play out of my pocket. I didn't want to play, and I had to go back over the road. But mm -hmm. that's the type of love she had for me. That was not the type of love that you talking about. <laughs> Christ had for it's us. It's love. It's love. You gotta live with because because yeah. in life, in life, we gotta deal with all of the realities. Isn't that right, brother Paul? Mm -hmm. Let's live with let's live with all the realities, good, bad, and, and every day. You know, just like today, it's, the sun is shining today, but y'all know a couple of days later it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. It may even snow again. Yes. You know, so we may not even be finished with that. So we know that the goodness does not last. Summer, y'all, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's just a memory. We don't remember when we used to complain about it being hot. Mm. Mm. We can't remember that because we've been cold for so long. <laughs> And so that's, but, this, but, but, but we know that the season will indeed change sooner or later. Yes. yes. Her, 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 everybody is depressed. <laughs> well, yeah, everybody is depressed. Yeah, because it's, it's a snowy winter, but somebody put up a, uh, uh, I was watching the weather the other day, and I was, I was telling, I was telling my wife, you know, this is the first time in a long time it's been cold on your birthday. And they put up something in 2017, it was 58, 2018, it was 62. Nine or twenty nineteen. <laughs> I said, "Welcome to the." I, it hasn't been this cold since I've been here, mm -hmm. and, 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 and since I first came here. And then, you know, and, and she wasn't here all that time, so it was like, if we had had it then, we might not be here. <laughs> but that's just life, yes. and you go through with it. You know, we've been through this before. We know that it's not always this cold every winter, right? <laughs> but it is cold. Is that not how you live? Thank you. That's how we live. Yeah. That's how we live. So, 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 when you look at the love of Jesus, and you had to go, if you look at Jesus, what Jesus had to put up with, most of us probably would not be happy with the folk. Mm -hmm. We might not be happy with the disciples. Mm -hmm. We might not be happy with a whole lot of stuff if we had to do it the way Jesus did. But Jesus is a but Brother Carl is absolutely right. No, Jesus no. shows us what love is because That's love enough. loves even when you don't love back. That's right. Yep. Cream. I'm going to tell you what I, I used to tell so Reverend. I always tell people I didn't marry for love. Reverend and I had something in common. 
and I felt like we could make it, all right? But then when I learned to love him, and I had to learn to, I didn't have to learn to have to love him because of the fact that he was good to us, okay? He was good to our children. He was good to me. He forsook himself for his family, okay? And I finally said to him one day, and you do anything that hurt me, I'm going to kill you. Mm. And I'm big enough fool then probably do it. But that's how God showed me, oh, yeah. Why are you going to kill something that you're supposed to love? Okay, but that's what. I'm going to write a book about that. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just as serious as a, as a getting with a goal behind it. I really meant it. Because I, I had never seen, I never had that kind of love from anybody as far as I was concerned, okay? And I felt like, here is a man who truly loves me. He loves our children. You know, he seemed to want to do as much as he can. He never thought about quantity, he thought about quality. Okay, and that meant a lot to me. Okay. Look at Brother Paul. <laughs> so, and we, we really have to take a true, deep look at love. <clears throat> because our ego can begin to involve and confuse with love. Mm -hmm. For example, um, in our, uh, my younger days, my wife and I younger marriage, two years of after marriage. But exactly it was about three years after our marriage. <clears throat> a pastor from the church my wife used to belong to when we became born together. Oh, we were engaged. Uh, we joined St. Paul. Man that had a pastor over there, he came to, to my apartment. And, and, and uh, wanted me to talk to my wife and coming back to the church to play the organ. She was in the church. And she played here. A lot of that stuff. To make a long story short, he put a move on her. He tried to hug her and try to this and that. So when I came home from work, there's my mother in law, my father in law, and Aunt Lisa were here. And I walked in and as soon as I walked in the door, they left because they are aware of my car. Mm. And so my, my my wife told me what happened. I said, okay, come on. Now, Paul, now come on. Don't give me all these kids. We went over to that church. Mm. And I walked in the front door of this car, and the usher came and met me. But that began with this, that began with you go up there and you tell Pastor so and so, so and so, that I'm here and I want to see him in the basement now. <laughs> he came down. Well, I, I knew he was guilty because when the ushers told him, he got a cloth out and wiped the sweat. Came down in the basement. And as soon as he got down and saw me, he threw his hands up in the air and he said, I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything. All that's beyond all that makes me deeper angry. My anger got deeper and deeper. I opened up the door and threw that dude outdoors. Mm. And it's, a, it's a brick building. I threw him against the brick building and he bounced off. I, oh, I tore him up. Mm. Ushers come running and I said, hey. And then you step up, come on, come on, I'll take you all on. Hmm. And my wife was out there just pleading. But see, that wasn't love. That was the ego. Hmm. Hmm. That was the ego. Hmm. Making me look bad coming to my house and my house, my territory. Jesus would not have done it that way. Good point. Whatever. That's a classic example. It is directly related to the issue with the tabernacle and the transfiguration. Because Peter, in his self-will, he wanted to build a tabernacle <laughs> without God's uh -huh. instruction. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with that ego. And that ego is kind of the thing that, you know, the acronym for ego, you and I know that the acronym for ego is easing God out. <laughs> mm. Mm. All right. I gotta remember so, that one. I gotta tell you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and that, that brings a good picture about what Peter wanted to do 
at the Mount of Transfiguration because sometimes people do it, you know, we need to, you know, and, and you have to be careful sometimes when people say they want to do something. Pull it out. Okay. That shows that you love it. Yeah. Okay? Give her all of it. If, if, if somebody wants to do something for you and, and as, as an act of love and you refuse it, mm -hmm. you may have made a greater enemy. Yeah. Then, mm -hmm. if you had, if, if they had never done anything, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's almost like I'm refusing your act of love. Mm -hmm. Oh God, that, I, I'm one of the hardest people to let somebody do something for me, mm -hmm. and that's one of Rebecca's favorite things. Don't deny that person their blessing. That's right. So, <laughs> and so when Peter wanted to do that, but, but God had to do a plan, and God had to remind them that this is not a plan about me being high and lifted up. It's about us going back into the world. So you can't stay at the mountaintop forever. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so when they get back down the hill, you know, they go right back into progress. Mm -hmm. Go right back. So sometimes we have to have a mountaintop experience. Mm -hmm. And then the next day we're back into the thing. But the good news is that God is there present with us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just like he was with us at the mountain, he'll be with us in the valley. Yes, but sometimes we don't want to go back into the valley. Mm -hmm. But if you, the real work takes place, not at the mountaintop, but in the valley. Yeah. In the valley. Yeah. Amen. Right. And that's where the tabernacle is. That's where the real tabernacle is. Mm -hmm. Because the tabernacle ought to be inside you anyway, mm -hmm. because God is not trying to get you to put him into a house. God is trying to get into your heart. I got a question. Yes. So how would you relate that to those of us who not just AMEs but any other uh, denomination who like to say, who like to, I guess, say, put it in in our expression of worship and praise rather than rather than uh, then be open to a different denomination or even these non-denominational churches. You know, oh, that ain't how we do it. This is how we do it. And the way we do it is right. So, you know, and, and, and that, it, is that kind of, is that what we do? Are we doing the same thing? I think or we no? do sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think we all do. <clears throat> we are, they are, every, all of us are guilty of it because our way is the best way. This is the only way. Mm -hmm. And and God, I think, if we look at it, it's like God is asking an interesting question of us because he asks, who is your neighbor? And if y'all let me get there, I promise I'll get there to it. But here's the question. Here's what I want to talk about this morning, though. So um, so I, I gave you this, 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 these, these few pages. Uh, they're from a book called The Lens of Love by uh, uh, Johnson Walton, um, who's a, a preacher and a professor of... Um, a preacher professor is the dean of the chapel at Harvard. Okay. okay? He's, a, he's a young black man. I think he might be 40, less than 45 years old. And uh, he's written this book kind of about how to read the Bible. Now, this is way too progressive for, for many folks on, the, on our side of, of the spectrum, okay? okay. But, but I, and so I'm not giving you all of this stuff because it's just a lot of mess in there. I mean, it's not a lot of mess, it's just a lot of. Of, of stuff there to, to back up the position, but I think this part right here is something we can all talk about because when we read the Bible, some of us are reading it literally, and some of us are, are interpreting, and we're all interpreting it, no matter, even if we're people who read it word for word, they're interpreting it, mm -hmm. okay? But are we interpreting it? Are we seeing what God wants us to see? And that's the hard thing to determine because who's right on that? You know, you are right. That's who's right. You are. Because God speaks to you. Mm -hmm. And you've got to trust the idea that God speaks to you. Mm -hmm. and, and But at the same time, you've got to respect the idea that if God speaks to you, he's speaking to somebody else yes. as well. Yes. yes. And the great thing about that is that God is not a one-size-fits-all God. <laughs> God is not a one-size-fits-all God. Mm -hmm. Because God deals with you at your point of your mm -hmm. need mm -hmm. and your and where you are. Mm 
Okay? Yes. Right. Because the whole thing is to help you become a lover of your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And some of us have to go through a different, some of us take different routes to that understanding. True. If that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That, you know, not all of us are going to, not everything, we're not all going to agree. We can't even agree. Some people actually like this weather. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some great. people don't want summer to ever come. They got problems. <laughs> <laughs> okay? And some people hate this weather. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the thing is, it's like, you know, or you, or, you know, some people love the idea of living in the moment. Mm -hmm. Some people hate the idea. And just like my son-in-law absolutely loves the idea of living in New York. And I think he's crazy. <laughs> Why in the world would you want to live in such a crowded, filthy place? Okay. That you can't get around, it costs way too much, you know? Why would you want to live there? What is there? What is the there there? And yet, when you're in the community where they live and you see all these children, now what's wrong with all y'all crazy people raising your children? In this mess where, you know, they got the, the, the first thing they learn is how to cross the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You better teach them how to cross the street because they're going to get killed. <laughs> you know, my my granddaughter can tell you what the sign means. <laughs> but she stopped her grandmother the other day because it was, I don't know, she, she pointed at the thing. And it was like, because like, she's been taught that once the thing turns, we don't cross. We don't cross. Because you got to teach the kids because they don't want the kids to get killed. Mm -hmm. And plus they give Jake walking tickets. So, you know, it's like mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but people absolutely adore it. So you have to, you know, we are never agree. So is it, is it surprising that we cannot agree on what love is and who our neighbor is? Mm -hmm. So let's look at these two. First, let's look at a couple of quotes from... Uh, from the philosopher, uh, I can't say his name, but I think it's, uh, I'm not even going to try, but Chuck will read. Yeah. Uh, to love someone means to see him as God intended him. Mm. Now that's an interesting thought. To love someone is to see that person as God intended him. We try to change it. Well, of course, we don't try and change it too, because as we see them, yeah. or we think they should be. There we go. So, you know, we have a plan for everybody's life, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, every 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 person should do this, every person should do that, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then Cornel West, um, a contemporary philosopher, says, uh, go ahead and read what, what, what Cornel West says her. Wisdom is the qualitatively different than smartness. And maturity is qualitatively, qualitatively, qualitatively different than braininess. I am not against smartness and braininess, but it just falls so radically short of wrestling with what it means to be human and making the right mature choices. You life. gotta be ready for Cornell West. Yeah. yeah. You sure <laughs> do. You sure do. I mean just this one. You gotta be ready for the Cornell West. That's right. But, 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 the, but, but this is really, you know, it's like wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's more, it's different than just being smart. Because mm -hmm. you can be smart and not necessarily be wise. Right, right. Okay? And then, uh, what is it? And maturity is different than being a brainy, brainy. There's some stupid old folks walking around. Amen. And some very wise young people walking around. And we call it common sense. <laughs> and it ain't common. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's that strange yeah. word. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got that going on. And so he says that, the, but the real thing is wrestling with what it means to be human. Yes. What it means to understand, what does it mean for you? That's the question that you got to ask yourself. What does it mean to you to be human? What does it mean to you? You don't, you don't have to answer it right now, but I just want you to think about that. Think about that one. What does it mean to you to be human? Let your poor heart break it in Huh? It's a song. Let your poor heart break it in But that's that's a real, you can't be faithful until you come to the idea that you understand what it means to be human. Yeah. Because 
if you don't ever see yourself making a mistake, you got a problem. No, 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 not necessarily, but, you, but that's going to be a problem. If you always see yourself as right, if I'm always right, <laughs> if I'm always right. That's your opinion. But, uh, but, but if you're always right, then that means anybody who disagrees with you is definitely wrong. And that means you're going to miss out on making some good decisions. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you know, if, or, or if, you know, you look at people and you determine based on what you know about them, whether or not they can give you advice. You, you, you guys have heard me say this before many times. I refer to that, what you're talking about, Dr. Nass, the University of Black. So it's, it, oh, oh, go ahead, sorry. Well, you learn, you learn from mistakes. If you don't do anything, you don't learn. Mm -hmm. and, and what you learn is you know, not going to learn in a book. You're going to learn again. Well, it was, a, it's a, it was a discussion that we, that we sometimes have here, and I hear it downstairs sometimes, is that, you know, all of y'all can read. <laughs> and all of y'all, and all of y'all old. <clears throat> and so you ought to know what's in here. Well, that's not true. No. <laughs> that is not true. That's simply not true. Because... And then, then even if we all read it, we're all going to interpret it. We're all going to read it differently. Mm -hmm. We're all going because you can, you, it, it, it's not just the Bible that that happens. That's life. Y'all can watch, we can go watch the same movie mm -hmm. right. and come out with different opinions of that movie. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. I watch the same movie 15 years later and come out with a different because life changes you. How you saw it at 20 is not going to, how you going to see it at 50, and you might not see it the same when you get to be 80. So, you know, so, so that's the part about being human is that human is, 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 a, is an evolution. I hope you're not the same person. I pray that you're not the same person now as you was 20 years ago. Nope. I hope there's been some growth, some change in the way you think. Uh, you know, you 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 learn some things. The decisions that you would have made at 20, you won't make at 40. Mm -hmm. And since you make at 40, you won't make at 50. At 60, 70, 80, 90, whatever. Okay? Mm -hmm. Life is just going, you know, it's just some things have to change. Mm -hmm. You know, people always say, act like it's a surprise. Oh, my body won't do what it used to do. What? What? Are you surprised by that? that that's, a, that's a shock to you? Well, I've always been taking care of myself, but at the same time, doesn't the, the, the Bible say, if you can y'all like the Bible, that this earthly tabernacle, yeah, is up. <laughs> you know, that this, that this thing ain't going to stay the same way. It is not going to stay the same way it is. Amen. It's going to, it, it, and the metamorphosis is, is, is chilly because you, you, you begin life as what? Helpless. Mm -hmm. And you're going back to the symphony. Oh. Poor little symphony. If they don't do it for her, it ain't gonna get done. Right. She can't change her own diaper. She can't get her own bottle. But that's where she starts at. That's where she starts at. And if she lives long enough, she yeah, may get right, right back to that point again. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's just that, yeah. that's that you get strong and you think you're the king of the world. And then, you know. Oh, that's a pain. Ooh. Yeah, let's, let's not talk about that part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a realization. It Tell is real. It, now, it, it is real. It is real. It is real. And so we have to <clears throat> so we have to learn how to live within our limitations. Or we will be totally unhappy. Yes. You know, it's like, um, it's, it's just, you know, you, you look at pictures of yourself from one time to another, and you're like, Lord have mercy, who, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> or, or but it's me. Something, yeah. something simple as, can't step in the bathtub. Mm. Well, you can't yeah. get your feet up high enough. Mm. Well, yeah. Now I got to cut a hole and fix my bathroom. No, you used to put them in the, the uh, what you call it. But that's just, but if you're gonna love life, if you're gonna to continue to live, that's you're gonna make those adjustments. Life. Yes, right. yes. Otherwise right. you're gonna stop living. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Because if if the if your view of living is the way you were, let me pick a number that works here, 35. 
if that's the it, if that's the end of your life, whatever you did in 35, once you can't do that no more, you might as well die. Yeah. If I, you always are said, I always said life begin for me at 35. Oh, praise the Lord. For I really do feel that way. But, but even then, things continue to change. That's right. all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying is that you got to see that. Okay, so now, yes, sir, go ahead. My history teacher taught us that she asked us what was the difference between knowledge and wisdom. And she went on to say, knowledge is what you know, and wisdom is what you do with what you know. And, 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 and that has always stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Because some people know a whole lot, but they don't know about the application. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's, absolutely. So let's look at, let's look at this first, uh, um, let's look at this first paragraph. And I want to kind of just, <clears throat> and remember, this is his view. You can disagree. You can disagree, and ain't nobody gonna be mad at you. Not at all. Okay? <laughs> well, from Genesis to Revelation, there's a dominant theme throughout the Bible. God sides with those on the underside of power. Mm. Ooh, okay? God sides with those on the underside <laughs> of power. Consider first the Hebrew Bible. That's in his and in, in, in your language, that's the Old Testament, okay? Mm -hmm. From the story of slavery in Egypt to that of the exile in Babylon, the most memorable narratives involve a God who stands over against systems of oppression. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's a good way to start. Mm -hmm. Okay. Similarly, the Hebrew prophets speak of God's care for the most vulnerable in Israel whenever the leaders trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth and push the afflicted away. Mm -hmm. That's in Amos. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we should never, ever, if you read in the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, if you read the Old Testament, you should always care for the poor and the afflicted. Mm -hmm. They ought to be uppermost in your mind because to travel on them is to be disobedient to God, yeah. okay? <laughs> and so then he goes on to say that the life and the ministry of Jesus captures the view of God. And according to Luke, Jesus inaugurates his ministry by quoting Isaiah. Y'all remember that? What? All the right. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me. And has proclaimed release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free. Mm. Y'all get all of that? Did y'all see all of that? Mm -hmm. um, good news to the poor. Mm -hmm. The poor get good news from the Lord. Yes. But not only that, <coughs> release to the captives. What's that mean? Deliver them from Egypt. Huh? Deliver them from Egypt. I, I'm sorry, say it. Deliver them from Egypt. Delivered him from Egypt. That was one of the things he did. But this is Isaiah, so we're past that. Oh. Mm -hmm. But then they're in exile. And and so the, the crazy part about exile, right, is, is that how did they get into exile? Mm -hmm. Because of the famine. They didn't have no food. No, that's, no not food. How they, that's not how they got in exile. That's the result of oh, exile. Oh, because yes. they didn't obey God. They, they, they did they so did not so obey God. God. Yes. Disobedience gets you into exile. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you need to ask yourself when you find yourself in a difficult situation, what did I do? Mm -hmm. How have I been living? Oh, we. You know, can, can we, that's part of the thing about being human, is asking yourself, what did you do? Because you need to be self-critical. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need, nobody should come and have to tell you about you. Okay, mm -hmm. on that part, between how people say, you're, you're harder on yourself than anyone else, but then you say we need to be self-critical. Mm -hmm. What did, did how do you come about finding that happy medium? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's a great question because you got to know. You got to be okay with knowing that you are not perfect. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not dealing with the be ye perfect thing today. Do not bring that to me right now. <laughs> I'm not dealing with it today. I'm going to tell you right now. But you've got to understand that part of your humanity 
is the fact that you will make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You will operate out of your free will. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, like, for example, it's like when my self-acceptance was real low, and people like him would ask me questions like, what part did you play in it? <laughs> and he used to, I used to get so mad because I had to take responsibility for what part I played in it. And then it's like on the same token, they asked me the same question. Herb, why are you so hard on yourself? Mm -hmm. Man. You, you know what I mean? That's a happy meeting. And that, that happy meeting, you know, it depends on the frame of mind I'm in. It could be imbalanced because I could be hard on myself and then I could be realistic with myself mm -hmm. and have some self acceptance. But if we're on, but the truth of the matter is, right, it's never all our fault. And it certainly ain't never none of our fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's when we under the grip of right. so, the spirit. So, so that's the thing. Because sometimes we want to play, I am totally 100% the victim. I have nothing to do with it. Or I did it all. I, I, I know I, I'm just, it's all my fault because I was the leader. I should have, you know. So what do you, so finding that part about to, to the real side of it, and that, that's what I'm saying. You know, I'm not trying to tell you to be super critical of yourself, but at least acknowledge that you that, that not everything happens to you. Yes. Sir. And another thing I used to do, I used to blame everybody else. Hey, <laughs> uh -huh. Greg, you make mm -hmm. me stick. Well, oh, Craig, you made me do it. You know what I mean? That was just an example. No, no, that's hey, true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. That's that, 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 um, that other thing, that addict man, man inside of me. You know what I mean? That don't want to blame anything else and blame everybody for mine. It's one of the hardest things in the world to deal with the idea that, that I have some responsibility in. Because when things are going good, guess who did it? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm so I did it because I'm smarter than y'all. I did it because I, I'm, I'm better than y'all. Right? When things go bad, it's because y'all don't Yo, understand baby. how wonderful I am. Mm. And that's what that's the way we are. You know, in our personal life, the kids don't act right because they don't understand how good I've been today. Mm. You know, I've been better than you than you've been. You, we say that to our children. Mm -hmm. I've been better than you than you've been today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, no, that's the Lord. But and I want to say this, I'm shut up. Yeah. Guys like me and him, we ain't get out of this stuff, that stuff by ourselves. I didn't get out of that stuff. I told Pastor that this morning. I swear to God, man, because it's like I ain't smart enough to be where I'm at to this day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't sit down and make a plan to, to live at 22, 21, 34th Street in a million years. I, I, it's, it's, it's God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's good. Oh, glory, glory to God, for real. And that's good. Mm -hmm. but, but here's the thing, brothers. Y'all got to remember that God works in concert with you. Yes. Okay? No, God gave you the opportunity, and you took it. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't. And as I'm saying, you, you got to take. Don't. Because that's the kind of thinking that leads you to believe that everybody did something bad to you. Mm -hmm. Or everything. Because you don't want to take any part of it. It's like, thank you, God, for allowing me to put my brain into action. Mm-hmm. Because you made some decisions mm -hmm. to follow Christ. Yeah. You made yeah. some decisions to get a new way of thinking. Mm -hmm. You made, it's okay to take part in this. Because God does not work just on us. but works in concert with us. Because why in the world, if that was the case, we would all be perfect. Mm -hmm. I, don't I don't understand why we don't get that. We would all be perfect. Because God would tell us what to do and we would do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would be that simple. Mm -hmm. well, how many of y'all got dogs? Mm -hmm. I had a dog. Mm -hmm. I had children. Mm -hmm. And you did everything for them. Mm -hmm. And they still didn't turn out perfect. And you thought for sure, you know, I went to the. Well, don't let me start. But, you know, you go through the laundry list of stuff that you went through or that you did, and it's like, as a result of all of this, you ought to be Back. there. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They had their own mind. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. God can say the same thing about us. After all I've been through, all of us, after all God's been through, all of us, we ought to be, we ought to be better humans. We ought to be better humans than we are now. Because all of us, oh, thank you, Mundo. I'm so glad you're here today. Uh, um, but you, that, that we should be better than what we are right now. That was my grandma. She was raised in this church. 
she used to get married with my dad, but my dad would always say God. Your grandmother is too? She my grandmother was. Born, she was wow. born and raised in his church. Mm -hmm. But I said, uh, my grandmother used to get mad at my dad because he'd always say, God going to do this and God going to do that. And my grandmother would look and say, God going to take you one of these days. I don't mind carrying you, but you're dragging your feet. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do some of the work yourself. Uh -huh. okay, so I'm going to give you the route. Okay, so here's your homework. And then write it down, but I want you to think about it, okay? And that question that I asked you, what does it mean to you to be human? To be human. And guess what? Whatever answer you come with is the right answer. Mm -hmm. If you're honest, don't try to impress nobody. You don't, you don't even have to share it. But I want you to start from that point. Because we can't read the Bible until we come to the, we cannot read the Bible faithfully until we come to the idea of our own humanity. Because otherwise, you know, it's just like, it's just like being black in America. Mm -hmm. We can all cry victim all the time. And there's a lot, and I'm telling you as a student of this stuff, there's a lot of racism in the world. A lot of racist policies in this country that contribute to some of the issues that we have today. But we also don't take all the opportunities. So there's something about us, and we can keep on playing, but guess what? Sooner or later, you know, it's just like, I mean, you know, my, my daddy was this, that, and the other, but I'm, God, I'm 59 years old for the next couple of months. And sooner or later, I got to stop blaming him for my life. Because I didn't have a lot of time to get my act together. So, you know, somewhere along the line, you've got to say, okay, yeah, I'm influenced by this, I benefit, but, you know, I have some benefits, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it ain't, all, it ain't all been bad. So that's part, yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to use a, a different term than what we're hearing. Psychotherapy. You know, the ground, the foundation of what we're talking about is the core of psychotherapy. You go see a psychotherapist it's because you're dissatisfied with your life, be it a relationship or, or whatever. But you're stuck because you don't know what you did or what the other person did. So you will pay 100 bucks an hour or whatever. To go through this discussion. The best school is the Bible. <clears throat> First, you gotta learn how to interpret it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're experiencing right now. What's is the name of this book? At the name of the book. Oh. By Jonathan Walter. Let me just share this with you. Uh, when I worked at the CNA in Cedar Rapids, I had. Well, I always make a, a run to see where I'm supposed to be, like, because I was home care nursing, so which meant I traveled from place to place. And I had gone out to, I talked to this lady on the phone and everything. When I got to her house, her husband looked at me, he just kind of smiled, and I go like, what is this problem? So he says, come on in. He told me where to hang my coat and stuff. When I walked in, the woman's woman said, oh, you're black. Mm. I just kind of stopped and looked at myself, and I said, yeah, I am. Her husband fell out of the laughing. And she kept saying to me, you don't sound black. And I finally just up and said, how am I supposed to sound? She said, not like you are speaking. And then she wanted to know all about them. But you know what? One of the things I learned in working in home care nursing was, you can learn a whole lot of things from all people, all different nationality, if you listen. Because I learned more from a German lady than I've ever known about anything because of the way she would express herself. So I tell people all the time, learn the person first before you judge them, okay? But in life, that's what we have to do. In order to get along with people, you've got to learn what are they about, where they're coming from, what is it about them, and you learn how to get along with them. Oh, I just had clients, and once I came to them, they didn't want nobody else to come, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> think about, what, think with that. about what Sister Clint, uh, uh, Clintus just said, and apply that to young people mm -hmm. and old people. Right. 
and the part that, that we stop listening to one another. Yes. I'm not listening to you because you're too young. I'm not listening to you because you're too old. I'm not listening to you because you don't have this or you don't have that. And that's part of that humanity thing. That's what I'm saying. You gotta start there. Yes. Because then, because then, if, if you don't, if you don't recognize humanity, when people start trying to t talk to you about the Bible, your humanity gets in the way. Mm -hmm. Your know, I'm not listening to you because you're this or you're that, and you don't see things right. You know, I don't see why people don't see things right. Black people don't see things right. So and so and so and so and what's going on. So we'll pick back up. And if, if y'all not going to bring this back, don't make me kill trees. Just leave it here, and I give it back to you. I want to leave. So you can, you can just leave it here, and then that way it'll be here for you next week. Huh? If you don't want to keep this, if you don't want to take this home with you, leave it here. If you're not going to bring it back, leave it here. And we'll just, I'm not giving anybody who was here another time. My man says I love trees. Sir? Oh. Well, I promise I'm not going to be on this, these three pages on you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to move forward. <laughs> we might need the help. Oh, you know, you two sound pretty for everybody, Sunday. Yes, he yes. did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Oh, so we'll Lord. remember all the names he called on Sunday. Brother two sound pretty for everybody on the list. Yes, he did. Uh, what, what else? Who else do we want to look at? All the people on second shutting list. Who else do we want to look at? Keep Steph P. Flo on your list. Well, okay. okay. And keep my brother who uh, is in hospice right now. Your brother? Yeah, oh, okay. in Kansas City, Kansas. He yeah. has dementia, Alzheimer's, I say. You know. Okay. Yeah, can I read them off again? Or is that too much? I'm going to be nice today and say yes. <laughs> My humanity is beating yours today. <laughs> April Harper Gill, uh, Virgie Carr, Cheryl Cook, Glenda Hill, Gloria Lane, Velma Newton, Carla Perry, Josephine Pickett, and now Anita Swanson, and Cornice Williams. And, and I remember Sister Pitt, because this is her 100 year, and she's okay. on bed rest, with bed rest right now. Sister Pickett. Pickett oh, is yeah. this is 100 years? Oh. This is cool. She'll be 100 this year, so. Keep me in prayer uh, tomorrow, I mean, what is tomorrow? No, Wednesday. Wednesday. Tomorrow? Mm -hmm. It's Wednesday? Okay. I went to the doctor yesterday, and they gave me the wrong place to go, and I did go, but I was late when I got there. And so I go back to the doctor tomorrow <coughs> to have this, uh, to meet with the neurosurgeon. And uh, I, I, I just want some prayer, and, and, and I believe everything's going to be all right. But uh, it's left up to God. Okay. And so uh, pray for me, and, and I think I'll make it. Amen. You know you're you going to make it. it. You know. You're going to make it. That's right. Right. You can't die because I done told him you can't. Praise the Lord. What you say? Keep my brother, uh, Meg Nelson, in prayer. Yes. 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 And for all of our kids that are running around in the booth, <laughs> Michelle, William, my niece, um, Francis' daughter, all got on boots okay. from great So, <laughs> hey, we just need to keep them all lifted up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Precious name, <clears throat> in precious name of Jesus, we continue to thank you, oh Lord, for uh, bringing us together. Heavenly yes. Father, we ask, oh Lord, that, that you will continue to uh, put into us a desire. Yes. A desire. To know you mm -hmm. fully. Mm -hmm. So that we might not only know you, but understand who you made us to be, what you intend for us, what is your call on our lives. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, continue to bless those who are on our sick and shut list. Bless those whose names are called. Those who need healing, oh Lord, be with them. Those who need comfort, oh Lord, be with them. And those who are walking around in boots, be with them. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, be with Pat 
the Pastor Clemens, oh God, and it continue to remind yes. him, oh God, that who he has served and yes. that, that God that he serves will not fail him. Yes. yes. Oh, Heavenly yes. Father, we ask, oh Lord, that you just be with all of us and continue to give us new hope. Thank you. Yes. For every new day. Yes. yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Scripture. All right. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not go. I was glad when he said it to me, let us go in the house of the Lord. In my father's house there are many nations. Do not sell out when I told you. Amen. Grass fades, the flowers wither, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Right All right. <laughs> Did I get right? <laughs> In the beginning, God created heaven. Sins of the tongue. With this, we bless our Lord and Father. <laughs> and with this, we curse men who have made in his likeness. Of God. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. With God, all things are possible. He gave her a walk through the valley of shadow and death of the fear of the Lord. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let me have 